A few weeks ago, I built some Wolverine claws, which were activated by a deep learning model that recognized my face, so when I pull the right face of Wolverine, it activates the claws. And in that video, I said the next thing I was going to look at was going to be a brain-computer interface. And it's actually easier than you think. So you can buy a kit, and I've got one here from OpenBCI, the Ultra Cortex Biosensing Headset Kit, which is just that. It's a brain-computer interface, and it's completely open source. But the first thing we've got to do is actually print the cap that holds all the sensors. Now, you can buy the assembled kit, but it's actually much cheaper to get the DIY kit. Before we have a look at it, thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and for lots of other projects in my channel. So check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. And here it is. So I thought I'd make a rather stylish black and yellow version. This was printed mainly in two halves with a seam down the middle, but each half took around 17 hours. So it's fortunate I've got multiple printers to print on at the same time. Obviously there was a lot of support material to strip out and I've cleaned it up the best I can. These inserts have threads in, and that allows the electrodes to screw in and out to adjust the height to my head. So let's have a look at what's in the box. There's some other stuff in the box as well, but this is the main stuff for building the headset. So we've got the 16 channel kit, that means we've got 16 electrodes. So let's have a look at those first. The 16 electrodes look like this. There's a sort of sprung piece, and then there's a comb on the end and a wire coming out of the back there. So these go in between your hair, no shaving of head involved. It does come with a bag of alternative combs, which are supposed to be better for long-term comfort. So I assume I can unscrew those and stick those on instead. There's 16 of those, but it also comes with four spare ones, which don't have anything screwed on the end, so I assume those are just spares. And as well as that, we get some of these, which are basically just blanks with a spring on and nothing on the ends. And that's just for comfort fit to fill in the other holes on the hat so that it goes and rests on your head comfortably. This is the 16 channel kit, so as well as the Cyton board, which is eight channels, we get the eight channel expansion daisy chain board. The whole thing is actually wireless, so it also comes with a USB Bluetooth interface to plug into the host computer. Power by default comes from four AA batteries, which is really handy, but you can put in a single cell LiPo, which they recommend you buy from Adafruit or somewhere, which I actually have, so I probably won't be using this. There's also a bunch of other wires to help hook those electrodes up, which we'll look at as we assemble it. And the kit also comes with eight snap-on electrodes, and those are suitable for the actual adhesive skin tact electrodes. You get a couple of bags of those as well, and those are the ones that stick on your actual skin, and I guess you could shave your head and stick them on your head as well, but they're intended for muscles, so I'm guessing you can use the same electronics and do basically muscle sensing if you want to build an exosuit or something like that. OpenBCI recommend you actually use a single cell LiPo, and that fits just in the back of the board. You could use the four double A's, but that's going to be fine for me. There's a board holder on the back of the cap, and that means the battery can fit in there, and then the electronics will fit on over the top and there's four studs there to actually plug the electronics board onto. I've got one of these Adafruit chargers for a single cell LiPo that allows you to charge off micro USB. It does mean taking the thing to pieces to get the battery out to charge it, but that'll have to do for now. We could, of course, just break the wires out and put an external connector on if we wanted to. There is a power switch on the side here, labeled BLE off and PC, and I assume we need the BLE mode to connect to the Bluetooth, and there's a little power switch that comes on there. There is then a 3D printed cover that goes on and leaves all these pins exposed. And then the 16 or 8 channel expansion to give us 16 channels in total plugs in over the top. I fitted 10 electrodes so far and the rest are just those plungers for comfort fit. So I need to wire in the first 8 to the first board and follow the guide on that. And then wire in another 6 and the extra 2 that I fitted onto the daisy chain board. 
All of these are of course just a screw thread so you can adjust them in and out to contact your head without applying too much pressure. And here it is fully assembled so that's 16 electrodes fitted and I've put those blank plungers in the other gaps for comfort fit. All of the 16 are wired into the board and the daisy chain board and then there's two clips that go on your ears which are ground reference points. And here it is so that's fitted on my head I've got my ear clips on and we've got the Windows GUI displayed here. There are various APIs for Python, Node.js, and there's also a processing sketch you can use to get hold of the data. For now, we're just going to look in the Windows GUI because that's the easiest one. It's also available for Linux and Mac. And that's connected with Bluetooth to the Bluetooth dongle that's supplied, and connecting up is pretty easy. It's set for the 16-channel version. On the left of the screen, you can see the 16 channels, in fact, there, and the top two are basically the ones above my head here, and we can see the plot on the bottom right of the screen, so if I blink, you're just picking up muscle data there, and we can see that the front of my head kicks off. Similarly, if I move my eyeballs around, we get something else. The back of my head is the visual cortex, so that's on the bottom of that head plot. We see we get some results there as well, probably because I can see things while I'm blinking my eyes. If I relax all my muscles and everything completely, That brain plot should turn to hardly anything, a very light colour, and we can set different thresholds for that. So in the top right we've got all of the bands basically, so those are all of the 16 sensors and the frequency range. We can see at 50 hertz there's a slight spike, and that's because the mains is 50 hertz in the UK and the mains cables are going all through the walls. So that's all around us, there's a notch filter for 50 or 60 hertz or nothing and that's set to 50, but there's still a slight spike there. Now I'm sitting not very near my laptop because I found that also caused a 20 hertz spike. So I'm using my other computer for that, which is why there's not a computer in front of me to control and show you different parts of the GUI. There are different views and we'll look at one of those in a moment. So you can see my brain activity, which is rather interesting, as well as the 16 sensors. And as I said, if I blink, then you can see there's definitely activity, although that's just picking up muscle elect um, electrical impulses. It's not actually my motor cortex. My motor cortex is around 11, 12, and sort of 3 and 4 over the top of my head. So if I do intense muscle motions, that should go and trigger those electrodes. What I actually find is it kicks off my whole brain a bit. So that's a bit weird, and I'm not sure why that is. But we can definitely see there's um, activity there on the sensors. And of course, you need volition and other things in your frontal lobe to go and move your limbs. And while well, I'm looking at stuff, although that seems to sort of kick off my whole brain with a little bit of signal, I'm not sure why that is, but we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. If I kind of tense my legs and my arms, then we can sort of get a more extreme reaction there. And if I relax completely without blinking, still some activity, but it should turn a very pale colour. So it definitely seems to be measuring brain activity. There's several other things in the GUI. The other most interesting one is band power. That shows you just some blocks of the different frequencies that are very similar to what we can see on the top right. So the lower frequency seems to be the muscle motions and so on. So let's just relax all my muscles. And then if I blink, those bottom two should shoot up. Similarly, if I tense all my muscles, very similar results. And the top bands are really to do with thoughts. So gamma, which is the very top one, is very high frequency brain waves. And that's the sort of thing you get in a toy like the Jedi training toys that have a brain probe and you have to concentrate to have a thing lifted up a tube. That's a real toy you used to be able to buy. I don't know if they still make them. And that uses gamma waves. So if I concentrate a lot, well, it's very difficult, but you should be able to move that gamma bar up. There it goes, and if I relax my thoughts, and not worry about anything, we should see that coming down. But it probably requires some brain training, it's a bit difficult speaking to you making this video, not to concentrate on anything. The other thing I'll comment on is it's quite hard to actually fit this on your head, and if you shake the whole headset, then everything goes crazy. And you can just about see, hopefully, that it says railed and not railed, or at least at the moment it says not railed on all of those 16 sensors. It takes a bit of time to get all of those. That's basically how good the conduction is with your head. And the ear clips are, of course, a ground point. So in the promo videos for this, they show it on your earlobes. If I move these clips down, 
Then some of those go to nearly railed, and that's basically to do with how good your conduction is between the electrodes and your skin and the, and the reference points. And I found it works much better if I move these clips up to the top of my ears, probably because it's near my head or something. And also it works much better. This is this afternoon after I've had lunch and I drank a lot of water. If your skin's better hydrated, they seem to conduct better and give you more reliable results. Elon Musk recently demoed his Neuralink prototype and basically what you can see in the footage is a pig on a treadmill, there's some electrodes in its brain and they can predict where its legs are going to move, which they're doing by actually looking at the electrodes in the motor cortex, seeing what brain signals there are and there's an algorithm that predicts what they think the legs are going to do and they match those up and it looks pretty good. But this is a lot more complicated. Obviously the electrodes are in the pig's brain. In my case they're on the other side of my skull unfortunately so we don't get such clear results and also they used around 200 electrodes and we've only got 16 here. But I think we can get better results and it'd be really good to be able to think to move something and have a robot move or a robot arm move or something like that and that's what I'd like to achieve. But what we really need to do though is put those electrodes near the motor cortex which is the part of your brain responsible for moving all of your limbs and all of your muscles and also near the frontal lobe which is basically where free thought comes from so that's where volition comes from. So let's have a closer look at the headset and see where those electrodes actually are. Remember that we do have some blanks here which are for comfort, so the ones that are actually electrodes are the ones with the white wires on. So we've got several around the front here, around the front where it's picking up my eye muscles, essentially here, and around the frontal lobe, so that looks pretty good. And then the rest of them are the other ones here. So we've got these ones around the back where your visual cortex is, and then we've got one on each side basically here, and also here. But looking at the diagram of where the motor cortex is, that's pretty much a headband that runs over the head. So that would be kind of these and this one here. So pretty much running over here. And these are all blanks at the moment. There's actually nothing there and nothing there. So those are the closest ones, but I think they're a bit far forward. So those are really frontal lobe. But what we really want is that band there filled in. But this is for experimentation so we can move some of these around and see if we get better results. But before I put that back on my head and give it another go, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor. Now here's a message you don't hear from most sponsors, go and have fun. Yes, that's right, the sponsor for this video, Dot Tech Domains, the choice for the most innovative startups and tech brands around the world, have a simple message. Go and play a game and have some fun. Games? Yes, the type of stuff that lets technical people like you flex their problem solving skills and solve some mind bending puzzles. Most other brands are trying to pull you in with offers for things you may never really use, but Dot Tech Domains is giving you a chance to win things you actually need. Simply go to breakthecode.tech, solve some amazing puzzles and enter for a chance to win some awesome prizes. That's it! The puzzles will go live on the 18th of November, the game is time based and ends soon, so check it out as soon as possible. That's breakthecode.tech and I'll put that link in the description to this video as well. So check it out to win some awesome prizes. Right, now it's time to put this back on my head. The electrodes I've moved are 13 and 14 and 3 and 4, which pretty much are on that plot there. They're just the band over the head and I've turned off some other fancy stuff and put some filtering on so we can just see the probes lighting up and not the whole brain or what it sort of estimates to be the graphics for the brain. So if I relax all my muscles, and then blink, we can see we get that activity at the front again, as we did before, so that's fine. And if I relax again... And we should be able to see some activity across the middle of the brain there. At least we can differentiate from the front when I blink. When I move my arms and so on, let's move my legs. So we should see three and four illuminating there. There's the other side. So I don't think that the probes are actually in the right place still, so I think we need a custom headset, perhaps with just a band of eight or 16 electrodes right over my head. But at least now we can sort of see separate regions of the brain doing things. So I've designed a custom headset and that is just a band that goes right over the top of the head and that's just got eight sensors on so I'm just using the original board, the Cyton board with the eight channels plugged in without the daisy chain board. Still got my ear clips 
and that's gonna just fit over the head. And what we really wanna target here is the motor cortex. Here's my brain. It's not my actual brain. It's one of those foam ones that's for education with all of the regions drawn on the inside. But of course, what we need to do is target the motor cortex that runs in a band right over the top of the head. And you can see that in the diagram there, highlighted in red, but you can also see it's quite small. So it's gonna be quite hard to get the probes in the right place. If we look at the brain end on, so if we look at it this way, and we look at one side of the brain, then we can see that that motor cortex is divided into different sections that go over the top. And they're quite small, and each one is for a different part of the body, whether it's your throat, or whether it's for chewing, or whether it's for your toes, or something else. And they're separated quite a bit. We have only got four probes, of course, that we need to stick over the top there. So it's gonna be quite tricky to get them in the right place. We should be able to differentiate between different parts of the body, and then we can see that those probes are actually producing something. Some of the regions, of course, go right down inside the brain, so that's gonna be very difficult because I can't put a probe right in the top of my head. The closest we can get is right to the top of the head, so I don't know how well that's gonna work for some of those regions. And I've plugged the probes into the channels as follows, and therefore they should be numbered as follows in the OpenBCI GUI. So basically one and two on the top, then three and four, five and six, and seven and eight right down at the sides. So now if I move different parts of my body, we should see different traces on different channels. So first of all, I'm just gonna move my left arm, and we should see some big spikes there on three, which is actually the sensor in the right place, and seven is the one on this side of my head. So I think it's actually picking up electrical impulses from my bicep. If I do the other side, then yeah, we see three and, and four for some reason, and we see um, eight, in fact and six, which will be on the even side, so that makes some sense. We get a little bit of three there, you can just about see. The other sensor's probably not quite in the right place for the other side, but three is definitely picking stuff up. Now legs are right in the middle of the brain, so I'd expect that to be one or two, but it depends how, if three is pointing through my skull to the right area. And I'm pretty sure that's my bicep, and three would be in the right place and four would be in the right place on the other side. I've just adjusted the headset slightly, and now if I move my left leg, we do actually get that big spike on channel three. So I think that confirms the theory that three is pointing through into the middle of my brain, and one and two for some reason aren't aligned properly. Perhaps they're just not in the right place for those leg motions that live in the middle of the brain. And again, there's my bicep. So we're getting closer to Elon Musk's pig. But despite some initially pleasing results, there's a few notes. What we understand is that the right-hand side of the brain controls the left side of the body and vice versa. But actually what I'm finding is the sensors on the left are getting triggered with the left side of my body, my left arm and my left leg. So that's a little bit confusing and I'm not sure why that is. It has been very, very hard to get this headset positioned in the right place, even to get those results and isolate one electrode from my arm or leg movement without all of the others getting triggered or nothing happening at all. So who knows what we're actually picking up. That said, there's an article, and I'll put the link in the description to this video, which says there might be more to it, to do with how the brain controls each side of the body. And we've also got this other theory, potentially, that the electrode pointing in there is pointing in to the other side of my brain, just because of the way it's positioned for those pieces of the motor cortex that are right in the middle of the brain, which relate to moving your legs, essentially. Of course, if you actually want to pick up the electrical signals from your arms and legs, you're far better off putting probes in your arms and legs. And that's how most advanced prosthetics work today. Even in the case of a double shoulder amputee, they still have the electrodes actually on the man's torso where the nerves end to control the robot arms. But that's not the point. What we can do here and what we've demonstrated is by precisely positioning an electrode on the outside of the head, not even stuck in my brain, I can pick up a particular piece of my brain and look for a particular brain wave and just isolating it to moving my legs and arms and using the motor cortex is the easiest way to prove that because it's very easy to see rather than some sort of ambient thought that my arm is moving and the wave is moving. But what we really want to do is put perhaps probes on the front of my brain, on the frontal lobe and various other places so I can isolate particular thoughts. That's gonna be a lot harder and I think really rather than a fixed headset like this, we're gonna to need to be able to position those probes by trial and error so we can see if it's working and move them all independently as we go. Now there is another headset available called the Emotive Headset and that does just that. It's got a kind of head strap 
and then it's got probes that look like they move on fingers. I'm pretty sure the technology is the same. Instead of metal spikes that go through your hair, they're using saline-soaked felt, but ultimately these probes are just metal conductors and there's nothing else to them, so you could use a number of things to actually probe your brain from the outside. I'm pretty sure I can make something like that though, so what we're going to do is actually carry on with OpenBCI and the board that I've got here and these electrodes, but probably try to make a different headset where I can reposition them and see if I can actually extract different thoughts from my head essentially to control some hardware. So I need to do a bit more thinking and come back with another video with another headset design and see what we can get out of it. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below. That's all for now.